Out of your belly, 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 out of Welcome to the Men of Integrity, men that rescue men and women. We are delighted that you've joined us again tonight for a journey through the Word of God. Call a neighbor, call a friend, and tell them that the Men of Integrity is on the air. And there is certainly a word for you tonight. I'm excited because I woke up this morning and the sun was shining. I woke up and I heard the birds singing and I felt the cool breeze of the wind. And that lets me know that God is still doing his business and everything is still in order. In spite of all the things that you hear or may see going on, one thing you can be sure of, God is still in control. So rest easy, rest well, and stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Apostle J. Edward Fish, our co-host, Pastor of St. Center, Kaposkova and Colleen. Yeah, um, I, I agree with you, Bishop, and God is still in control, you know, and praise the name of the Lord, and it, it'll keep going just like God said it was going to go, regardless of what happens, God's Word stands sure, and um, nothing is more powerful than the Word of God. He set a decree, and it won't change. Amen. As long as the birds are still praising him, I'm all right. <laughs> and as long as the sun is still shining, he's going to get my glory. All right. Because that lets me know that he is still in control. Mm -hmm. You don't need to worry mm -hmm. until the whole cosmos of the entire world gets out of its normal rhythm. Mm -hmm. Then you need to worry. <laughs> but as long as the sun rises in the east and set in the west and the wind is blowing, the birds are singing, Glory to God, you don't have nothing to worry about as long as you're walking with Jesus Christ. Yeah, there's a scripture in the Bible, Bishop, that says, uh, if the foundations be removed, what can the righteous do? We're going to trust in the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we're going to talk about today. You must trust Jesus. Mm -hmm. In spite of all that's going on, you as an individual must trust Jesus. Yes, I know we trust him as a nation. We trust him as a state, a city, a community, a family. But today you have to trust him as an individual. All right. You have to trust God. Second Corinthians chapter 12, apostle in verse nine. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. That's a declaration that God gives to the Apostle Paul in spite of what he was experiencing in life. Mm -hmm. The foundation of our faith and our truth stands in Revelations 22 and 13. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Mm -hmm. God said, I'll be there for it start. Mm -hmm. I'll be there while it's going on. Mm -hmm. And I'll be there when it's over. Mm -hmm. Well, praise the name of the Lord. And I'm looking at this here and um, it says, um, uh, he goes on and says, I will glory in my infirmities. You know, all, all, all it's saying is that God resisted the proud, mm -hmm. but he gave grace to the humble. Praise I, the name I, of the Lord. I, absolutely. <laughs> you know, Paul, Paul was in a, 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 a personal situation here, you know? But the, the one thing that I like about this is that we must establish a trust, mm -hmm. okay? And the establishment of that trust has to be in someone or something. And, and that someone is Jesus Christ. In Colossians chapter one, verses 15 through 17, let me sum that up, he says, the Son of Man is the image of the invisible God, mm -hmm. the firstborn over all creation, for in him all things were created, things in heaven, things on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions, rulers or authority, 
all things were created through him and for him. All right. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Mm. The fact of the matter is Jesus can get you through anything and everything mm -hmm. by the power of the Holy Ghost. Oh, yeah. Well, and, and that just, that's just wonderful. Um, you know, Hebrews said in the first chapter, they say he's upholding everything, Bishop, mm -hmm. everything by the power of his word. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's mighty. <laughs> that's mighty. And th that's why we have to establish our trust in something that is unfailing. Mm. When you look at that text and he used the word sufficient, mm -hmm. it's an unfailing strength. Okay. And then he says, grace, my favor is unfailing. Mm -hmm. So you got a unfailing favor of God and an unfailing strength that is sufficient for you no matter what you're going through and no matter how dire it may be to you. God says, hey, my grace is sufficient mm -hmm. and my strength is made perfect mm -hmm. in weakness. Mm. You know, it is required to lean on God by trust to experience victory. Mm -hmm. You can't get victory unless you lean on God through trust. That's right. That's right. And, um, you know, Jesus said, he said, uh, without me, you can do nothing. That's right. And so there's no need of you. Uh, standing there saying what you did, you breathe in the air of God. Mm -hmm. Everything, <laughs> well, he reigns on the just and the unjust. So I don't, I don't really know what we have other than to depend upon his grace. And, and part of his grace is love. He, he didn't love me because of what I did or what I do. He loved me out of his own will. And so his favor, his grace, uh, he decided to share it up on me. Why well, I said, and I'm going to humble myself and receive the grace of God. Amen. We have to get out of the world system. Mm. And, and, and that's a pattern of thinking. Mm -hmm. we, we, we have to get back to the mind of Christ, the thinkings of Christ, mm -hmm. because there, where there is no trust, there could be no demonstration in power. Mm. You know, people say that I need a miracle or I need a breakthrough, I need this. Well, those things are based on principles. In order to get the miracle that you need, there are principles that you must follow. All right. He that cometh to God must first believe All that right. God is. All right. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That suggests to me that before you can have a miracle from God, uh, even a breakthrough, you have to develop a trust in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That's not easy. Mm. Okay? That, that requires certain principles to be operating in your life to develop a faith. And then the faith creates a trust. Mm -hmm. How can you trust what you don't even believe in? <laughs> and how can you believe in what you've never been taught? Mm -hmm. See, and this thing is not ambivalent. It's when you become fully persuaded that what the Word of God says is factual. Mm -hmm. Now, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word was made flesh. So when you're talking about believing the Word, you're talking about having trust in Jesus Christ, who is the Word made flesh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, you know, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. And you're right. And how shall they, how shall they believe if they haven't heard? Yes. And then that almost takes me back to where we want to be to the preacher, right? Mm -hmm. And why yes. says yeah? And and how shall they hear without a preacher? Absolutely. And so um, um, the church is. I love this here. The church is relevant. Praise mm -hmm. the name of the Lord, and always will be relevant. Praise yes. the name of the Lord, because the church is giving forth faith, and without faith, it's impossible to please Him. Amen. Upon this rock, <laughs> I will build my church. Come on, now. is what Jesus says, mm -hmm. and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. When He talk about the gates of hell, He's talking about the meeting place, the place of schemes and schisms, and it doesn't matter what the enemy try to devise against the church. It won't work. All right. Because the church, like you said, is God's ideal. Mm -hmm. Now, what you have to understand in this day and time in which we live, Apostle, is the fact that the Christian life is not devoid of problems. All right. 
Okay? The enemy uses this old tactic, and you ought to be then caught on to this by now, that he tries to make you believe that God is not real and God does not care and God does not love you based upon what you are experiencing above, beneath, or around you. But what you're going through and what you're experiencing, what you're hearing and what you're seeing has nothing to do with the love of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. okay? Because the writer tells us in 2 Corinthians 1 and 8, for we were not, brethren, have you ignorant of the trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, mm -hmm. above strength, and so much that we despaired even unto life. Mm. These brothers were in trouble. Okay? These brothers were going through something. But God does not give us a divine immunity from all suffering and pain. Mm -hmm. I'll give it to you when I say it is right here. Paul said, we're troubled on every side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, <laughs> praise the name of the Lord. Um, uh, we're going to have challenges and everything like that. And you're right. Uh, the Christian life is not void of trouble, but it is, watch this here, but it is, if we follow it, it's devoid of defeat. I'm just saying, <laughs> that's what you're talking about now. That's why we trust in Jesus. There you go, there you go. Because the trust in him, the leaning on him, is sure victory. Mm -hmm. I, I wish somebody could show me anywhere in the Bible where God or Jesus has lost any battles. <laughs> I think he's undisputed mm -hmm. champion. Mm. He's never lost a battle. In no situation, under no circumstances, he has always prevail with victory. And then here's one of my scriptures that I love. He says, praise be to God who always causes us to try. There you go. Um, mm -hmm. But that trust has to be in Jesus Christ. Listen, sooner or later, every life is going to have some tears. Mm -hmm. it, it, sooner or later, every life is going to have some pain and some disappointment. But praise be to God who always causes us to triumph in those situations. That's, that's right. And, 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 and that's why we say that the Christian life is not void, though, of the victory. That's right. Of the triumph, you know, um, of, of success. It's there. It's there. We just have to follow it. Trust. We have to just trust in the Lord. And you can't stop a man that's trusting in the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. He doesn't have to know everything. He just have to trust in the Trust in the Lord. In fact, that's the, be the beauty of it. I'm trusting in him. I don't have to know this, and I, don't ha I just know the one who, I who knows everything. Amen. <laughs> and, 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 and let's chime in right there because, see, that man, he has to follow what he knows, mm -hmm. the principles of what he knows. All right. And that takes you to Proverbs 3 and 5 uh -huh. and 6. Trust uh -huh. in the Lord with all your heart. heart all your understanding, uh -huh. and lean not to your own understanding. All right, all right. Don't lean to what you think you know. <laughs> Don't lean to what you think has been proven before. He says, no, in all your ways, acknowledge God. Now, some people think that that makes them feel small mm. when they have to acknowledge somebody for every little thing. No, I don't need to acknowledge you about this right here because I know this. You know, I'm a grown man. I can be able to handle this. Mm. Don't fool yourself. He says, acknowledge me in all your ways That's right. and I will direct your path. Sometimes it is the small things that we overlook that we don't think are significant are the very things that causes us to be defeated. Yeah, and it, uh, scripture says the little foxes which destroy the vine. They yes. keep, keep nipping those little things, keep nipping at you and nipping at that vine until the weight of the fruit um, breaks on the vine because the vine has been tore apart. And so, and so God wants us to be dependent upon him. Now, I know people, people don't want to be like that, Bishop, mm -hmm. but God wants us to be dependent upon him because he knows the way. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? But uh, we think that, uh, well, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a weakness, but that's what exactly what he wants. That's why Paul said, why he said, I'm going to glory and weakness. Mm -hmm. For when, when, when I'm weak, then am I strong. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. The, the text describes mm -hmm. this great man of God mm -hmm. experiencing 
a thorn in his flesh, mm. something that was aggravating and irritating to him. And, and, and the word thorn described in the Greek is a stake. Mm -hmm. It's not some little thorn that you <laughs> get from a cactus bush. No, it's like a tent stake. Mm. And this thing was aggravating and irritating him to the point that he did what he was supposed to do. He prayed. <laughs> Glory to God. And that reminds me of one of them old, old, old songs that, uh -huh. that we used to sing when we used to pray. It says, uh, I had to get, what a friend we have in Jesus. Uh -huh. okay. All of our you remember sins that? and griefs to bear. <laughs> what a privilege it is to Take carry everything. everything to God in prayer. That's right. The <laughs> Apostle Paul did what he was supposed to do. Mm -hmm. this, this, this is where you learn true, authentic trust. Mm -hmm. He followed the principle of God. Mm -hmm. He fulfilled Jeremiah 33 and 3. Call upon me and I will answer thee, and I will show you great things and mighty things which you did not know. Mm -hmm. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, 7 through 9, this guy was following the rule of God, mm -hmm. and God wouldn't answer. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't answer. Uh. <laughs> Paul says, okay, man, I know this works. I, I know this is the right thing to do. And he prayed the second time and God ignored him. He would not respond to him at all. And finally, after the third time of prayer and seeking God's face, he would not even respond to the request of Paul. Mm. He just said to him, my grace is sufficient. Mm, mm, my mm, strength mm. is made perfect in a time of weakness. What he was simply saying to him is that you're just going to have to trust me in this. <laughs> and how often do we find ourselves in situations, my beloved, where we just have to trust what God is doing? Yeah. Well, you know, um, uh, Paul was saying, uh, I guess after he learned all of that, he said, he said, having done all, Stand. 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 <laughs> Watch this here. You done done all you know to do. Stand. Hey, amen. <laughs> I, that, that, that sums it up. <laughs> I want to give you a thought to think about tonight. The, the, the first thought I want you to think about tonight is this. Don't expect Jesus to always give you what you want, but trust what you get. Mm. Because he knows what he is doing. Amen. If you take your amen. focus off of what you wanted him to do, and focus on what he did do, you're going to be victorious. You're going to be empowered. You're going to be great. Because James 1 and 7 tells us that what? That every good and perfect gift comes from above and coming down from the Father of lights to whom there is no variables. Okay? And so instead of God healing him, he gave him something better. Mm. He gave him a promise. Mm -hmm. Well, praise the name of the Lord. Well, even the, even the promises of God are yea and amen in Christ Jesus. And they will, uh, well, they will make us uh, eventually become partakers of the divine nature. You, you're right. Uh, he may not give us what we want, but he's definitely going to give us what we need. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's, let's look at that, Apostle. He said to him, after this grieving and aggravating and toiling, and he wouldn't stop praying because he trusted he in trusted the word of God. Mm -hmm. And God says, my grace is sufficient. He says, my unmerited favor to undeserving men is sufficient. It will not fail. Mm -hmm. What I'm giving you will be able to sustain you comfort you and carry you through whatever you're going through. He says, listen, my strength is made perfect in your weakness. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Can you imagine being in the weakest moment of your life right now, this moment? full of uncertainties, not knowing if you're going to get well, not knowing where your next check is coming from, not knowing if you're going to have enough food to feed the children, but yet knowing that his grace that he has caused to abound towards you is enough for you tonight. 
He's not going to fail you. It's enough. Whatever you got right now is enough to multiply at the right time. Yeah, and Paul, well, you know, uh, when you look at the thing that he wrote uh, at the end, he said, fight the good fight of faith. Yes. You understand? The fight of faith. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. And then Hebrews picks it up and say, if you have need of patience that after, mm -hmm. after you've done the will of God, yes. you, might, you might receive the promise. You know, after you've done all you can do, just stand. Amen. I, I think that right now, regardless of what you're going through, even mm -hmm. looking at maybe the lack uh, or, or the discouragement that's facing you right now, even you might want to call it poverty tonight because you don't know where the next is coming from or how it's going to work out. He says, in everything, give me thanks. I, I wonder right. tonight, would you give him thanks? I wonder mm -hmm. tonight while you're sitting here listening to us that you would just stop stressing and stop having anxiety and just open your mouth and tell God, I thank you that I can trust you. Mm. I thank you, glory to God, that in my darkest night, you're going to see me through. You're going to sustain me and you are not going to fail me because that's the word of God. Say it with me. My grace, his grace is sufficient yeah. and his strength is made perfect in my weakness. Yeah. And the apostle Paul, we, I guess we're still trying to figure out uh, some of the things that he learned from the Lord and he was operating in. He said, he said, I'm instructed. Yes. To be full. Yes. But I'm instructed yes. to be hungry. Yes, yes. <laughs> Lord, ha Lord, have mercy. He he was trusting. He was trusting even when he's hungry, even when it doesn't look like it, Bishop. Yes. It don't look like there's uh, um, uh, there's no hope whatsoever. He has hope above hope. Praise yes. the name. Same thing with Abraham. Abraham hoped against hope, and yes. so we just got to stand. His grace, as he said, his grace is sufficient. Yes. Yeah. I, I want to encourage you tonight to know, okay, that God never fails, mm -hmm. okay? Even though he did not answer you in the way that you thought he <laughs> would, Come on he now. gave you enough to be sufficient. He says, I will make all grace abound towards mm -hmm. you. You have an all sufficiency in all things Come on at now. all times. All right. Ever since I read that, I will never forget that all the days of my life. When I have nothing in my hand but air, <laughs> he, has a, he has allowed his grace to abound towards me, having all sufficiency mm -hmm. in all things at all times. I've come to trust him. I don't understand him, but I trust him that he will never, ever let his word fail. You remember what he said in his word? He says, I'm watching over my word. That's right. To perform it. It's not going to fail you, people of God, tonight. I don't know who you are, where you are, but I want to tell you tonight that God's grace is not going to fail you. That's right. He has caused it to be sufficient. And in your weakest moment, before you give up, look unto Jesus again, who is the author and the finisher of your faith. Take it on. Yeah, and um, the Bible says that grace and peace be multiplied. Yes. You want more grace? Going to have to get more knowledge. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. But yes. that knowledge, watch this here, uh, uh, will bring you into a divine, a divine portation. And again, you can see you have what you need. Yes. Watch yes. this here. And he knows your, uh, 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 your uprising and your down sitting. Yes. So praise the name of the Lord. So you don't really have to worry about, uh, about God. Watch this here. He knows where you at. Absolutely, man. You're about to make me get excited because <laughs> I love that phrase that Job said. He says, he knoweth the way that I take. Mm -hmm. Listen, you have to trust the necessity of the lesson. Come on now. Okay? It's necessary for God to take us down this road. It's necessary for us to experience the things that we are experiencing because it's going to teach us the love of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. It's going to teach us the faith that is necessary to have in him as the days grow darker. You got to remember the Bible says in the day of adversity, if you faint, then your faith is weak. No, you don't need weak faith. You need enough faith that 
that whatsoever you ask when you pray, Apostle, believe and you're going to receive it. It's necessary for us to experience what we are experiencing now. But watch this. Look outside the window in the morning. The sun is going to shine. <laughs> Listen very carefully. The birds are going to be singing. Mm -hmm. Okay, Just be still for a moment. You're going to feel the wind blowing. And that says to you that God is still in charge. I want to jump up out of this chair because I want you to understand <laughs> that to trust in Jesus is essential for the time which we live. Oh, yeah. Praise the name of the Lord. God is certainly a good God. And, um, you know, we just got to we just got to stand on stand on that word. Praise the name of the Lord. And God will see us through. Praise the name of the Lord. He already knew what was going to happen before it happened. Praise the name of the Lord. Why well, this here? But you ought to know that about God. Say, well, I don't know. I don't know um, what God's going to do, but whatever he does. Mm. I like what I like what Eli said. They told him maybe gave him a doom, uh, 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 a statement. And he said, whatever seems good to God. Yes. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. I, I, Apostle says something that triggers something in me. And I want to decree and declare this to you that you don't need to worry about what's happening anymore. You need to worry about what's happening to you. All of this pandemic and all this stuff is happening all over the globe. That's really no longer our concern. What is the pandemic doing to you? Is it causing you to seek the face of God more? Mm. Is it causing you to pray more? Is it causing you to stand on God's word more? Is it causing you to become sanctified and consecrated and holy, fit for the master's use? On, See, man. it's not what's going on in the world that you need to be concerned about. We need to be concerned about what's going on in us and with us. Are we losing hope and faith because of that? That's the trick of the enemy. I come to tell you that God is still in control. Psalms 119.67, watch this. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. Come on now. But now have I kept your word. <laughs> because what we're going through, people are reaching back and grabbing the word and embracing the word of God and says, I trust in Jesus Christ. Yeah. You got about 30 seconds. And here's what Jesus said in Luke 18. He spoke a parable to this end, Bishop, to this end. Yes. Man ought to always pray and not faint. My God. <laughs> Second Corinthians 12 and 9. And he said unto me, he said unto you, my grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, would I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Mm. God's doing a work in you because he needs you to be the light to your children, a light to be your family, and a light in your community. Don't fail him. Trust him. Mm. Don't forget to sow that seed to KPLE. We're counting on you to help us keep the voice of God amplifying throughout our region in dark times like this. Call a neighbor, call a friend, and tell them we're depending on you come and visit us in any of our services, mm. Facebook Live, okay, in Jesus' name. <laughs> <laughs> out of your bed, out of your, out of your